been like five years now. Oh. Will you marry me? Of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> And it's an artery. Yay! In a movie they don't stop filming. This no, is what he's saying. Wow, that's, yeah, that's a diamond. It's that, yeah. a diamond. It's <laughs> hey guys, it's Robin, and welcome back to the Science of Self Care. Today, I'm so excited to talk about not just my engagement ring, but my aura engagement ring. I've been wanting an aura ring for a really long time, which my partner knew, so I was very excited to. <laughs> to get a proposal, not just for the sake of, you know, making a commitment to my love, but also to get tracking, tracking my sleep. Because the amazing thing about the Aura Ring is that through these three little nodules, it can track a bunch of different things from heart rate to blood oxygen level. It's pretty incredible. So I've been wanting to try one of these for a very long time and now it's been three months. I definitely have some thoughts. I have some pros to share. I also have some cons to share. And at the end of this video, I would like to basically round it all up and say whether I think it's worth the price and whether I would recommend getting one. So if that sounds interesting, if you've been curious to learn more about the Aura Ring, this is definitely the video for you. Firstly, I wanna share a pro. Probably this is the reason I wanted one in the first place. To me, this is the most beautiful and discreet wearable out there. I'm not really a fan of the Apple Watch. I don't like to have big clunky things on my wrist. So when I discovered that there was a beautiful little ring that could track your sleep, also track your activity levels, your heart rate, and all of these different things. I, from that day, thought I want one of these because it is so subtle and beautiful and I don't know, it doesn't weigh me down. It's also much lighter than you would think. People are always surprised when I hand it to them because it looks like a very heavy piece of metal, but it's extremely lightweight and it's just comfortable, discreet, and beautiful. That is my first definite pro. Now let's move to a con. This I didn't really expect before owning one, but by nature, you will want to check your phone right when you wake up because you wanna see how did I sleep, what's my readiness score, what's my sleep score. So when I first had the Aura Ring, I checked it first thing right when I woke up. Previously, I never had the habit of checking my phone right when I wake up, and it's not a habit I like to have, so right now I'm still figuring out the sweet spot of checking up on my Aura results without going into a phone moment in the morning. I will just check it later in the day if I feel like generally seeing how I'm doing and that's something I had to experiment with. So this is a very personal choice, but I personally do not like to look at my phone right when I wake up. So this is something you might wanna think about in terms of phone hygiene and sleep hygiene. Related to that, I have a pro. So one of the the best things about the Aura Ring is it gives you immediate feedback on a bunch of vitals and your sleep quality literally the next morning. So, so it makes for very quick learning and self-discovery. You can quickly figure out what things actually add to your quality of sleep and what things take away from your quality of sleep. I think a lot of people often report that they will go out for a night drinking and then they'll just see their <laughs> readiness score and their sleep score plummet and it makes you very aware of how little lifestyle habits impact your sleep quality and the overall state of your physiology. The Aura Ring measures things like heart rate variability, which can be an indicator for general stress levels. So in addition to sleep, you're also getting feedback on is your body feeling calm? Is it feeling stressed? And that is so valuable. Sometimes you feel like you've gotten a really good night's sleep, but you actually haven't. For example, if I drink red wine, I become very, very sleepy. And then I fall asleep extremely quickly but that doesn't necessarily mean that the quality of that sleep is good whereas sometimes I've also had evenings where I went to bed super late and I woke up super early but then I was surprised to see on my aura ring that I actually got really good quality sleep I got a lot of deep sleep I got a lot of REM sleep and that also is interesting to just to be able to immediately tune your sense of what good sleep feels like and looks like in your life. So I think that's one of the most valuable things. And I already noticed three months out that I have more of an intuitive sense of how to get good sleep now that I've been getting that immediate feedback the next 
morning or next day. So next I have a con and that is that the activity tracker in this, like for example, your step count is not super duper accurate. I think it's important to note that this was originally developed as a sleep tracker, not an activity tracker. So I think it shines in certain areas, like really telling you about all of these different variables related to your sleep, your sleep latency, which is how long it takes you to fall asleep, all of these different components that are super interesting. When it comes to the actual activity counter, I definitely trust the iPhone a little bit more. I've noticed that the iPhone is pretty accurate. If I take 20 steps, it will record 20 steps, whereas the Aura Ring seems to overshoot. So say I have walked 10,000 steps according to my phone, the Aura Ring might calculate 12,000 steps. If you are really looking for the best, most accurate activity tracker, maybe the Aura Ring is not for you, but if that's kind of a side benefit like it is for me, I'm really more interested in sleep and general stress responses in my body, then I think the Aura Ring really does that well. Next, I wanna mention another pro. I love how highly, highly personalized the Aura Ring is. It takes data from your previous weeks and months and kind of creates averages for you and normal ranges. I love that because in the past, in medicine, we've always had these normal ranges which are just developed across a population and now, it really is using your data and finding your different sweet spots. So for example, heart rate variability, whether it's high or low, is based on your previous months and weeks of your personal data, as well as things like, you know, your ideal bedtime. It will basically know when you've been going to bed for the past weeks and will calculate an hour range. That's kind of your ideal bedtime. And if you start to go to bed later and later, that will shift later and later. If you start to go to bed early and earlier, it will shift with you. So I really love how highly personalized all the ranges are. So when you get a red bar, which means that you're in a non-optimal zone of something, that is personally calculated and I appreciate that very much because I feel like I'm often an outlier in things. So the next con is that the battery life is a little bit shorter than I feel like is marketed. It supposedly has a battery life of about seven days, but I've found that to be not quite true. I feel like it's been more like five days for me. I don't know if it's the settings on my phone or the settings in the app, but still that's not, you know, that bad. It takes about 80 to 90 minutes to charge fully. So, you know, if you do that once every five days, it's not that big of a deal, but I still find myself sometimes thinking, oh shit, I feel like I just charged it and it's already out of battery. So it's just something that I think my expectation was that it would be a little bit longer, but these are definitely cons of luxury. <laughs> the fact that this little tiny thing is tracking all of that and can hold a battery charge for five days is honestly mind-blowing, but I will say that the battery life seems to be shorter than it is marketed as. The next pro I wanna mention is that it's a wonderful time capsule of your health data. So Apple Health as an app does a decent job of looking back in an aggregated way. You can look at your steps for the past week, months, year, but it's not that easy to go in depth on a day-by-day -day basis. And I also am not the type of person who's going to download some self-monitoring app and input all this information by myself every single day. So the fact that I can just live with this ring on, sleep with this ring on, and then get a detailed report every single day that is also easy to navigate so I can go back in time. I can see, how did I sleep on Christmas Eve? Oh, interesting, okay. Or how did I sleep on this specific week uh, when something happened? It is so easy to navigate back through time and look at all of these details. And I think that's pretty special. I also use it as a period tracker, which I've found to be really nice. The Aura Ring app really asks you, have you had your period yet? It basically does the work for you and often you just have to put yes or confirm. For example, a workout. Sometimes the Aura Ring will know that I've been for a walk. Sometimes it won't know what I've done, but it will just ask me to confirm that I went for a walk. So the app itself does a lot of that work for you and records a lot of that work for you without you having to do too much. Sometimes you may have to confirm that you did something, but it's a very passive tracker on the user's end, which I really love because it doesn't take up much of my mental space at all yet I have now a log of all of these things and it's very, very easy to go back 
through time and look at each individual day and find trends. I think that's pretty special. Another con I want to mention is there is a recurring software fee to use the app. So the subscription is free for the first month and then afterwards you pay 5.99 euros a month. Again, these are European prices, so I don't know if it's different in other countries, but it's gonna be a ballpark around six euros per month to actually have the app and access your data. So that's something to just be aware of, that it's not a one-time purchase, it's a continual subscription that you're actually getting into when you purchase an Aura Ring. Another pro I want to mention is kind of a more meta point of just by wearing this ring and knowing that things are being tracked, it makes you really, really care about your sleep. And even, you know, in the past, if I was thinking, oh, I kind of feel like staying up late and watching some stupid show now I think my aura ring will know and I will have a red bar tomorrow. We don't want red bars, we only want blue bars. So the fact that I know that it's being tracked and I will see the results of my behaviors the next day just really makes me care about my sleep in a way that I haven't previously. And I think that's so important because getting good sleep is probably one of the best things you can do for your health and it's free. The aura ring's not free, but good sleep is free. So if an app can actually make you care about your sleep and invest in your sleep, then I think that is a very positive thing. So the app is laid out in a pretty simple way. There is a sleep score, a readiness score, and an activity score. The sleep score obviously is reflective of your quality of sleep the night before. Your readiness score is generally reflective of how fit and ready you are for the day to come. And your activity score is more related to physical activity. Things like walking and workouts, that's all recorded in the activity score. Every day is not the same in the Aura app. On some days, the app will basically prompt you to rest a little more based on your vitals. On other days, it might prompt you to push yourself and work a little bit more, and, and it will give you an activity goal that is a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. I love that personalization. I love that it just tells you things straight up. So here it says, your ideal bedtime is between 11.15 and 12.15 a.m. Last night, you went to bed at 12.30 a.m. <laughs> it just tells you that no judgment but then you are aware okay i went to bed a little bit late tomorrow or tonight maybe i'll go to bed a little bit earlier so it just makes you aware of things that otherwise would probably escape your attention so now we come to the final question is the aura ring worth it so i have the heritage silver Aura Ring Generation 3. This retails for 314 euros. And then after the first month of the software subscription, which is free, you pay 5.99 a month to access the app. To me, that is very much worth it. This is the only wearable I own and it's the only wearable I want to own. I love it because it is, again, so discreet and there's no interface. I don't need to be logging on and tracking my workouts. I don't need to be getting texts through it. I love how simple it is and that there is no screen. So maybe for some people that is a drawback, but for me, I really appreciate that. If I also think about how much I have learned about my sleep and how much more seriously I take the quality of my sleep, I think 300, 15 euros is a decent price to pay for your health and to invest in your self-awareness about your body. And six euros a month, I think is also very fair for the subscription of the app. It is an application that I do check regularly and use regularly. You know, sometimes we get subscriptions and then we never actually go back into the app. That's not the case with the Aura Ring. For me, it's worth it. This is a lot cheaper than a diamond ring. So in that sense, it's really a steal. Uh, an Aura Ring and an engagement ring in one. I definitely would recommend it to anyone who wants to get to know their body a little bit better and especially their sleep habits a little bit better. I also think it's just the most beautiful wearable. I would love to know if you own an Aura Ring, if you've been thinking about an Aura Ring, if you currently use other wearable devices, are you interested in learning more about your sleep? Share down below. I love to get discussions started because usually other people can learn a lot from your experience. If you enjoyed this video, I would very much appreciate a like or comment to help this channel grow. My goal is to reach a thousand subscribers. 
at some point in 2023, we're almost there. So I would love your help in that journey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.